Okay, after watching this video, you should um, should have an understanding for how uh, the amino acyl tRNA synthetase uh, three anil tRNA synthetase how that this enzyme is able to select for its cognate amino acid, which is which is three anil. And I've drawn some of the features of the specificity pocket for three anil tRNA synthetase. There's a, a zinc ion uh, here. Uh, this will look uh, similar uh, or familiar or comparable to the zinc ion that we, we saw in the, the act active site of carbonic anhydrase. But here, instead of using the zinc for catalysis, we're using it uh, for molecular recognition. And the enzyme also provides a hydrogen bond acceptor here, an aspartate group, and then some van der Waals uh, contacting surfaces, hydrophobic surfaces, some methyl groups. These all belong to the, the enzyme itself. And it is searching for amino acids that fit into the specificity pocket. So we're going to bring in the amino acid threonine. And it has just the right shape and can make favorable interactions with uh, the, the zinc ion. Uh, the amino group can uh, make a metal coordination bond to the zinc. The hydroxyl group, which is a, a characteristic feature of threonine, can also coordinate to that metal ion, and it can make a, a hydrogen bond to the aspartate. And the, the, the methyl group can make a, a van der Waals contact with these other side chains, the alanine and threonine, threonine side chains of the, of the enzyme. And all of these, these molecular interactions correspond with favorable in interactions that encourage recruitment of threonine into the, into the enzyme active site, uh, meaning they, they have energies below zero uh, and are attractive, favorable. Now let's take a look at what happens when the similarly shaped uh, amino acid valine comes into the, the specificity pocket. In this case, we can we can make those favorable van der Waals contacts that we that we made up here uh, in this region of the specificity pocket, but this methyl group uh, is now taking the space reserved for the hydroxyl group, and it is unable to donate a, a hydrogen to make a hydrogen bond here. In fact, it's going to appear much bigger than a hydroxyl group and create a steric clash. Likewise, this methyl group cannot uh, contribute lone pair electrons for uh, interacting favorably with the, the, the metal uh, orbitals. And so there's going to be a clash here that excludes the valine. Even though it's similarly shaped to threonine, it's not making these favorable interactions. And in fact, we're, we're looking at a quite unfavorable repulsive forces that prevent valine from being misrecognized as, as, as threonine. Over here, we're now we're taking a look at what's happening when we add serine, or when serine ventures into the specificity pocket. Serine has the hydroxyl group. It's able to make the hydrogen bond with aspartate. It can make a metal coordination bond both with the amino, the amino, amino group and, and with the hydroxyl group. And the only thing that's missing is a little bit of favorable van der Waals contact. There's some empty space here because the methyl group has been replaced by just a, a, a hydrogen. So we're, we're, we have reduced attractive uh, energy, but we're not experiencing any repulsive uh, steric conflict with, with serine. And so serine will be um, misactivated, misacylated onto the tRNA that's supposed to be decoding threonine codons at about the 1% level. So this will be incorporated uh, by mistake, 1% of the time. And that's that's too high of an error frequency for protein synthesis. So the synthetase also has a, a second active site called the editing site, and it will hydrolyze the ester linkage connecting serine to the tRNA that's supposed to decode uh, threonine codons. Uh, threonine, uh, different from serine, uh, because it has this extra methyl group, is too large to fit into that editing site. So threonine will get activated onto the tRNA uh, that's supposed to decode 
3D encodons, and it will not go into the editing site because of its extra size uh, imparted by this this methyl group. And there, uh, this is like this is like one story for one of the three uh, one of the amino acyl tRNA synthetases explaining how the correct cognate amino acid is uh, uh, recruited and how close, uh, closely shaped uh, amino acids with similar chemical properties are excluded. And th uh, these, these enzymes often use a, a double sieve type mechanism like, like we described for threonine and serine. Threonine fits perfectly into the selectivity pocket and gets activated. Serine uh, uh, is, is, it is also activated at some lower frequency because it's missing some of the favorable interactions. But because it is smaller than threonine, it can fit into this other active site that uh, removes, uh, removes the mis misidentified amino acid by, by hydrolysis. Phalene is excluded from this specificity pocket because of, because of steric conflict. So there's like two sieves going on at the same time. One uh, that prevents things that are uh, too big or uh, don't have the right chemical properties. Uh, and then an, an editing site that removes those amino acids which are smaller than the cognate uh, uh, amino acid. And, and the cognate amino acid is, is not subject to hydrolysis in that editing site because, because of its increased size and, and the repulsive forces that prevent it from going into, into that editing site.